Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, I'm Tung, and today I want to talk about my experience with the Fujifilm X-T5 for photography only. I did a video a few days ago called My 72 Hours with the X-T5 where I only talk about the video specs and, and I know that got some photography guys triggered. Like, hey bro, talk about photography. This is a photography camera. In this video, we are just going to talk only the photography side and what my experiences were with the camera. I only had the camera for three, four days, so I didn't have the chance to test it out fully. So I'm just going to talk about the thing that stood out to me. But let's just talk about the first thing that everybody wants to know, and that is the image quality. So the image is beautiful. The 40 megapixel sensor is full of details. The colors are rich and you're going to find looking at the straight out of camera JPEGs, a delight. Every time I looked at the rear back LCD screen, it got me super excited. I was hyped about the colors and the tonality and overall uh, the pleasing skin tone that Fujifilm is known for. With the 40 megapixel sensor comes great detail, like very, very great details. We are 10 megapixels away from a GFX 50S, guys. That That's just insane to think about. And also for anyone that messes up their composition in, in camera, the 40 megapixel will help retain some of that detail while you crop in and recompose your image in posts. I love the images that I got out of this camera. The Fuji color is what makes Fujifilm so special in my opinion. There's just a filmic pleasing look to them. Uh, the film simulations is another thing Fuji is known for. The new film simulation, the nostalgic negative film simulation is here. I just wanna say this before I forget. The nostalgic negative film simulation is not in the raw camera profile you find in Adobe Lightroom, nor is it in with the X-H2 camera as well, but it is in the X-H2S, which is funny. So Fujifilm, I don't know what happened there, but if you can give us a firmware update where those film simulations will show up in a raw processor, that would be very great. I would love to start editing my photos with the nostalgic negative film simulation. Another thing is the dynamic range on this camera is very good as well. I find when shooting in high contrast situations, the camera can retain more highlight and shadow information than the previous generation cameras, uh, such as the X-T3 and the X-T4. And with the, the limited time, I'm very happy with the images produced with this camera. And you guys are going to as well. So get excited guys. I know some of you guys already have your X-T5 in hand so just get very excited to go out and shoot with this. So during my time with it I find the autofocus to be very good. It's not as quick as the X-H2S because there's not a stacked sensor inside this camera but I find it, it was very reliable when it came to shooting portraits. I have nothing bad to say about the new autofocusing algorithm Fuji has put into their latest gen cameras. It's much more reliable than the previous generation, so everyone's going to be happy with this new autofocusing system. And here, I had my wife Hillary running towards me in frame. I believe this was like at eight frames per second, and it nailed these shots with confidence. I am super stoked for you guys who purchased this camera. When it comes to a lot of movement now, Fujifilm, the Fujifilm X-T5 will nail focus at a much higher rate than before. For the autofocusing and low light scenarios, um, I did test out the autofocusing when I was testing out the low light capabilities. Uh, for this camera. So if you want to see that video, how well does the X-T5 do, do in low light, click here somewhere. But while I was getting samples in low light, I did notice that there were these two gentlemen that were walking by a shop. So I snapped a photo of them that you can see here. But anyways, I just remembered the autofocusing working very well in that scenario. The box detected one of their heads and tracked it in this type of uh, environment. And this is with the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. So I'm sure once you put a native Fuji lens on it, it would be much better. Maybe the newer lenses, but I'm not, sh I'm not too sure about the older lenses. So just keep that in mind. I should also mention I do like the shutter sound on this camera. It reminds me of the X-T3 shutter sound where it sounds more full. The X-T4 had this weak ass shutter sound. It sounded like it was trying to be stealth, like But the X-T5 sounds a little bit more Oh, uh, not like that, but you know what I mean. 
Oh man, but it sounds a lot more satisfying in my opinion. It sounds a lot better than my X-H2S. The X-H2 and the X-H2S has like this weak, very weak sounding uh, silent shutter. This is a vanity thing. I just thought I'd throw it in there since some people do like a sound of a good shutter. But we gotta talk about the buffer. Uh, so I did notice a slight drag when it comes to uh, the buffer. Shooting 40 megapixel files uh, at continuous burst will do that. It's not as fast as the XH lines because given those cameras do use a CF Express memory card, so it could write a lot faster than the V60 and the V90 cards that you have. So be sure to get the best memory card for the 40 megapixels files. I also recommend you shoot lossless compressed to save storage space. Storage space is about to get very expensive if you don't. <laughs> And like I mentioned in my previous video, the lossless compressed file is around 40 to 47 megabytes and the uncompressed is around 80 to 87 megabytes. I do wish Fujifilm has a feature that Canon and Sony has when it comes to their RAW files. I think it was something like a large, medium, and small RAW files. I've been asking for this since the GFX 100S, but I wish this feature could come into these high resolution uh, 40 meg megapixel camera, and hopefully it can come in a firmware update. This small, medium, large RAW feature could be super helpful for anyone that is looking to upgrade to this camera, but doesn't need that 40 megapixels. You can switch to like a medium or a small RAW file and save on storage space. And they shoot less megapixels than the full 40 megapixels. So for the people that just want the X-T5 but just want it because of the improved autofocusing or the new tilt screen, this feature could benefit them because most people are fine with 24 to 30 meg megapixels. Uh, 40 is nice to have but with higher resolution comes more storage space, comes more money for that space. Um, this uh, this feature could alleviate some of that. Again, I, I really want this feature to come into a Fujifilm. I also want to touch on the tilt screen. Photographers, your prayers have been answered. Uh, the three-way tilt screen is back. The only problem I have is that the, the back LCD screen and the EVF uh, doesn't look as sharp and bright. And this is coming from someone that owns the X-H2 and the X-H2S. And they have an amazing LCD screen and an amazing EVF. And I just remembered the Fujifilm X-T2 having a very good EVF for its time, but I didn't get that feeling with this camera. Uh, it's still good, don't get me wrong, but I've seen better. And last but not least, let's talk about the body and the handling of this camera. Uh, the retro dials are back and you're gonna be very familiar with this if you're an X-T owner. This camera feels like an X-T2, an X-T3. Very small, very sleek, very well designed. Uh, for me, when I hold this camera, I get so excited. It, on it honestly makes me wanna get off my ass and shoot. And that is the best thing a camera can do. And that is to inspire you guys. Compare the X-T5 to my X-H2 and my X-H2S, it feels, my X-H2 does feel a bit clunky. It just feels like there's just too much going on. Uh, the X-T5 just strips everything down and it gets you back to the basics of photography. You have the exposure triangle dial to set up your shutter speed, your ISO, and your exposure compensation. The tactile feeling of changing your shutter speed uh, that gives you the nostalgic feeling of shooting an old film camera is going to make a lot of people very excited for the X-T5. I do love holding this camera, man. I just love cameras that are small that doesn't get in the way and that feels like it's an extension of me. And I do wish I had more time with this, I really do. That's all I really have to say about my first impressions. And now if I did miss anything, I apologize. Uh, for the people that got their X-T5, congratulations. I hope you guys take dope ass photos. And if you got your X-T5, Leave a comment down below and share me your in initial reactions with this camera. If you find this video helpful, do me a favor and can you subscribe to my channel? I post Fujifilm and photography related content on this channel and I got more videos coming up in the future. And that is it for me guys. Once again, my name is Tung and I'll see you in the next video. I love you.